you know, thinking about it, looking at it, and again, slow pick and ban phase from both of these wildcard teams. And of course, these teams are going through the round robin. It will be a best of five final tomorrow between the top two teams. Of course, a lot of matches to play out before we get to that stage. Zillion banned out by Legacy. It was Choo Choo's that picked it last time around, but clearly he expects Darker or Archie to pull that one out. I don't really know... I don't really know what Champions Dark is mainly, as a mid laner, of course, and he's, you know, he came out and made a very big claim saying he wants to pull out some weird and wonderful picks, which we're hoping for. But, like we talked about, Legacy, if they want to run uh, a different composition from game one. It obviously could be a variance in that pick and ban strategy. Maokai is still up and available, something we have to consider. Alistair, still up and available, something we have to consider. And Legacy, I feel, are talking about other of those. They banned out Lee Sin last time around, but that may have been a targeted ban to Crystal M from Dark Passage. This time around, they're banning the Alistair themselves, D-Man. They, they're not gonna first pick it, but with Maokai available, Maybe with Cogmore available, those have to be considerations in my mind. Yeah, we'll see where the Russian force use that last ban. It is available to the Maokai. Is it going to be a ban or are they going to let Mickey Well get his hands on that one? It was such a big, big factor in last week's matches. We saw, of course, on the Friday, not a single game lost by Maokai. Is it going to get through? Yes, it will. Yasuo banned out and Maokai looks like it will instantly get picked up. I really don't know what to read into these, these the, the picks and bans. Uh, taking Yasuo off the table may mean Darker wants to run run a mid laner that could be countered by Yasuo. I'm not really sure, but definitely a focus on the mid laners and so those primary picks. Yasuo casted in Italy, definitely more traditional bans than Tristana, Zillion, and Alistair if you're on the side of Legacy. Well, of course, it does seem that Cogmore and Nami are going to get selected as well. So that's going to be the first two picks for Russian Force. They are, again, just like Dark Passage, focusing on that bottom half. You can see us right now at the moment. We'll be, we're going to continue because we can see it. It's all good. <laughs> on the side of Russian Force with the Cogmore and the Nami, that is a very powerful 2v2 lane. Um, Cogmore is a bit of a pain in the butt to deal with in the laning yeah. phase whenever he's got his uh, Bioarchan Barrage up and available, and Nami's gonna have Sustain, is gonna have uh, the ability to hard CC, and the poke from her Tidecaller's Blessing on the E, means that every time they combo the two together, they're just oppressively annoying in the duo lane. So if Legacy are gonna be playing this matchup out, I wouldn't be surprised to see them going for a lane swap like they did previously, maybe just to try and disregard the strength of that Kog'Maw Nami. Oh, and as you see, it is Rengar and Oriana locked in. Rengar banned by Dark Passage in the previous matchup. This time has got through. Carbon happy to take that one. Safe picks. I mean, you've got a massively tanky front line. You've got the ability to team fight with Oriana and Maokai. You've got the ability to make picks with Rengar. Legacy have got a very well-rounded composition oh. thus far. <laughs> and That's not out of the ordinary darker. It's not, but that could be top lane. It, like, mid lane Lulu, mid lane Lulu has fallen out of favor somewhat, and mid lane Lulu can poke and harass Maokai somewhat early on, thanks to the fact that she can turn him into a tree when he jumps in, you know, uh, turn him into a munchkin and you can get away with the glitter on. So, my gut is that that's gonna be a top lane Lulu. If it is Lulu versus Orion in the mid lane, Choo Choo's has a 21 minute 50 record to break for 300 CS, uh, CS <laughs> because that's what Peke did in a similar matchup. That's what Froggen did in a similar matchup, slightly slower. But I am expecting that to go top lane. Oh, of course, Elise was locked in. Deruin taking that one for Demeka. We're going with Demeka. Demecha, I'm sure you guys on Twitter can... I think uh, Demecha is probably the Russian way, on but that one. I'm going to go with Demeka. Yeah, we'll see how it works out for them. At the moment, I'm quite excited to see Quinn being hovered over by Kadred. I think it'll be changed. Cogmore was picked up. It will be Corky changed over and Leona for Egypt. Kadred played a lot of Corky during the Oceania qualifiers, and he had a very good Corky. His performance was strong. Since then, after some of the patches and changes, Corky's actually gained more power. But Legacy have definitely got a team fight composition built. They're going to be looking for Maokai plus Oriana plus Leona to be the strong initiation forces and then relying on Rengar and Corky to clean house. They've got damage threats from multiple champions. They've got CC. I like the composition that Legacy's put together. Russian force is more about protect the Cogmore. Nami for disengage. Lulu for disengage. 
I almost wonder if Russian Force was hoping to get an Orianna because that would have made the Protect the Cogmo much more powerful. Get the movement speed, get the command protect, and instead it's going to be even more disengaged and zoning. Bouncing bobs from Ziggs plus the minefield. So Russian Force, it's going to be damage focused for Ziggs and Cogmo, while the rest of the champions are there to keep those two alive uh, to deal with Legacy's engage and team fighting composition. Well, I'm not too sure what games Dark has been watching to think that Ziggs is out of the ordinary. Maybe he's still stuck in Season 3 because it is a very standard champion. Of course, we saw Alex Six trying to run it unsuccessfully last week. Didn't work out too well for him. But in this comp, I think it fits in. It works out, but they are very heavy magic damage, Russian Force. Yeah, they, they are. They, they do have a lot of percentage damage from the Cogmore as well, especially once he gets that Blade of the Ruin King. So there is the potential to shred through the tree and the Leona. But for Russian Force, it is so dependent on them not getting caught by multi-man shockwaves or multi-man solar flares. The moment they do, all of Legacy can just run them down. They've got gap closers, they've got speed boosts. They need to be very careful not to group up and get caught by those group abilities. Yeah, Legacy is definitely a team that's all going to pile in. Their team comm says it. We saw them do it in the last game. The question is, have the lineups managed to change your vote? Tweet hashtag LGC win or hashtag RF win for the Russian force to at LOL Esports, and we'll see the numbers have shifted from that 50-50 that they started out with. I think they would. I mean, game one was very exciting. Oh, the Aussies are on right now. I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah, they're, and they're tweeting away. We'll see, we'll see how that vote plays out. But again, um, I think Russian Force do have fairly strong lanes. Lulu's not as much of a bully as earlier on. And as long as Darker maybe gets some assistance from Demeka, I think he can do well against Choo Choo's, but he needs a little bit of help. Oriana is also a strong laner herself. So laning phase, very, very important for Russian Force. If they fall behind and then they just get engaged upon over and over and over, they're going to get strangled out of this game completely. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen, as we get underway for game two, the Russian Force starting out this time around as that red team moving on force as a four down towards Legacy's jungle. Of course, we saw a reversal on the red buff last time around. Kadrit is holding position. Got to be careful he doesn't get caught out by the Aqua Prison early on. The Nami bubble that Archie could toss out there. That's potentially something that could lock him up. He can't see them just yet. If he goes for it, just out of range. I think they're going to go towards the bush rather than where he is at the moment. That's like yeah, the going to see them very position. clearly. Yeah, he's going to see it in there. We're not going to see anything crazy coming out from him. They will clear out the ward, and that gives Russian Force full advantage as they move in. You can see on the opposite side, of course, that Carbon is already at that rim buff. He's going to ward out and try and start off up there. Going to end up being just a trade of buffs, and for the time being, it doesn't look like Cardio or Egym are going for a lane swap, although I may eat those words in a second, as it looks like Cardio's moving around. Um, I think if Cardio and Egym do commit to a 2v2, they need to be so wary and so careful in the opening levels. Once Egym gets uh, a full complement of his spell reel, you know, level three, and if he gets the right engage onto Archie, they can potentially come out ahead. But until level three, until Egym's able to manage to get the stun. Oh, take a look at this. Uh oh Russian force back This is going to be a big fight. This is out of position completely. Carbon goes aggressive. Kadrid comes around the side. Minky Well is caught out. Has to flash away from that one. Well played. Russian force moving around as a five on force and catching Legacy off guard. So they managed to get the flash out of Minky Whale. They have very deep vision in Legacy's jungle already. And it's going to be up to Demeka to punish Minky Whale for not having that summoner spell. We talked about the 2v2, didn't need to because it does look like Cardrid has moved himself into that top lane. And I do anticipate that is just to buy time for himself and Egym to get levels when they can look to engage the immobile Cogmore um, and Nami in that regard. So we'll see how this That's all we're asking. Let's see how this works out. We are back into the game. So game two underway once again. Legacy as the blue team up against the Russian forces on the red team and of course this is the international wildcard tournament it is a round robin stage to begin with six matches we've just seen one already play out legacy took down the turkish team dark passage in a very very successful first match for them despite being 5,000 gold behind right now minky whale is in desperate desperate trouble in this bottom lane because he's in danger of being dived four on one i think they're going to go for it you can see Cardrid pushing top lane but you've got Demeka hanging out on 
level two. We'll see if they can land the CC. Minky well, 4v1. Remember, he's got no flash. Now he's caught in the Acro Prison. He's in all sorts of trouble. No way out of this one. Archie, though, took a lot of damage, and a flash comes out from AT Remains. He would have been taken down, but the first blood, nonetheless, was picked up by Demeka. So very good to at least get some summoner spells off of AT Remains, as well as Deiru and the flash and the summoner heal. But from the level one play, from the uh, departure from Legacy's jungle and the return to Russian Force's own jungle, they're able to get the flash from Minkywell and successfully take the tower dive. Minkywell did instantly teleport down and look at the damage he's taken. He's now been dropped very, very low. In the top lane, they're diving AT remains. They're gonna dive on towards him. Remember, he has used his flash and teleport as well. Not quite as successful a trade this time around. It was Cantrid actually took a couple of too many tower hits at the start trading with EGM. It does force him a little bit away with this big minion wave. Yeah, but look at the damage that the tower's already taken. It's down to below half the hit points. I'm actually surprised to see EGM is able to zone AT Remains, but that is purely because AT Remains does not have his flash. So he's going to be cheeky and leech some of that experience from out of threat range. But the tower is definitely being focused now by Cardrid and EGM. Uh, a different strategy uh -oh. from previously in the day. Here comes Rengar, Carbon sneaking in. Meanwhile, Darker in trouble in that mid lane. Choo Choo's having a really good trade. Manages to pull the mindful down, has to burn the flash. Ignite goes down. Choo Choo's forced the attack ball in. He's got him. The Ignite will run, and Choo Choo's straight up one he wants. Darker popped the heal before the Ignite was even down, and Choo Choo's completely outplaying Darker. The reply kill from Legacy is uh, compounded by the fact that they managed to secure a tower as well. And AT Remains has been completely zoned away. Despite the fact that Minky Well was poked down very low once he teleported in, he's been able to sustain back up thanks to his passive and his potions. And he's got himself a CS advantage. It is very small at the moment, but we'll keep our eyes on if it keeps extending, because Legacy, they're continuing the push. Yeah, the 3v2 push is continuing on. I'm not too sure they're going to get too much down on this tower. They've got to be careful if Carbon gets that stun built up, which he has now if they don't step out a little too far, they will back away. So first tower goes to Legacy, successful push from them, and a different change from the previous matchup. Minky Whale, meanwhile, down in this bottom lane, keeping up in levels, but still fighting hard to keep this tower alive. Hasn't got his flash available yet, could quickly twist and advance onto someone again. Caught out by that Aqua Prison, and Day Ruin puts a good trade of damage back on towards him. Thanks to the tower hits, though, I would dare say that trade ends up becoming even. And you can see that Cardrid at level 4, along with Ejim at level 3, having a phage completed. They're going to be a little more confident to pick a fight with Deiruin and Archie. I still think, as long as Deiruin and Archie do not get caught out by Zenith Blades, they should be able to punish Legacy's duo lane until level 6. The moment that Solar Flare is available, uh, Dayrun's going to be so, so careful because if he does get caught by ACC, his day will be ruined and he's just going to get completely popped down. Uh, Cogmore, horrendously immobile and needs to be very, very cautious. I'll keep my eye on this mid lane. Darker yet to hit level 6 while Choo Choo's has that shockwave ready and waiting to go. Already burnt out his heal, of course. Ignite was used. Carbon kind of sneak around. Carbon himself actually far behind. He's only just hit level 4 as opposed to Dumeka, who is 5 and very close to 6, but it's a Dragon Star from Legacy and honestly, Russian Force are nowhere near this one. Yeah, punishing the fact that Darren recalled and that he showed in the top lane. So, numbers advantage is always going to be in favor of Legacy. So, a fairly safe Dragon, despite the fact that Archie's poking. Uh, big oh, in bomb. Oh, That's going to hurt. Smite gets in there. They're going to come around the side. Exhausto, Archie in trouble. Tries to get out of this one. Carbon tries to front it on towards him. Now Demeka turns it around. He can get on towards Carbon. He's going to get the damage down. No! Flash comes out. He gets in there. They turn it back around. Shockwave flashed out of by Daka as Ju Choose joins the fight. And it was a one for zero trade to Legacy and the Dragon. Everything going their way. Very, very well played. Russian Force simply did not have the pressure with them. Despite the fact that Mega Inferno Bomb was coming down, Cardrid and Egypt engaged on Archie and really punished. They managed to make a kill count, and it's just, there's not enough support here. That is a 3v1 as a level 4 Nami. And yes, Demeka does get carbon low, but again, he's still in what is a 2v2, 2v1, 3v1. As the rest of Russian Force arrives, it's already too late. A lot of summoner spells have been blown, and their HP bars are simply too low, so they're forced to retreat. So both summoners now down on Darker, while Choo Choo's has that Ignite back off cooldown. Shockwave will be back shortly as well. So Darkwin, real, real problems in this mid lane already. Minkywell in the top lane, he's had a bit of an exchange with Deiru, it seems. 
in this top half. Of course, the Australian fans out there voting strong and still continuing as everybody else gets on the legacy hype train. 77% for them right now. Of course, it was 50-50 early on. 80 remains. Burned down on the hit points as Kadred punishes him. And this is all going legacy's way right now. Blue Wolf given to Choo Choo's. We'll see what Chujus can do with it. He was already 1v1-ing Darker without the blue buff. And, I, you know, we said in order for Darker to have a good uh, time in that lane, he needed the support oh, to Demeka. Oh, bot lane, 80 remains, already backing off from this one. Chuchu Top lane as well. making his way down. They're going to go 2v1 on Minky Well this time around. That ultimate, not enough. And he will go down. So they've managed to successfully punish Minky Well. The question is. Will 80 Remains be punished back? So 80 Remains was forced to use Wild Growth, so he did manage to survive. But Egypt is being forced away, and he needs to be very, very careful. Kadra's low on mana. I don't think they can afford a tower dive. They're waiting for Carbon. Oh. Here comes the Kitty Cat. We'll see if he can make them purr. Not so stealthy when you run past the tower, but they're going to see him anyway. He's going to be able to pounce in there. Oh, good to anybody. Locking on towards him. In he comes. Gets the stun down. And Kadra will pick himself up an easy kill. Yeah, 80 Remains running away from the tower meant that he was just easier to single out. Another kill on the board for Legacy. And despite the fact that there's been multiple tower dives on Minky Well, he is still ahead in CS in comparison to AT Remains. So still keeping himself relevant, still keeping himself on uh, the board. This is a 3v3 for the time being. AT Remains is making his way to the blue buff steal. And we'll see if the fight can break out. Oh, instead, top lane, Day Ruin taken very, very low by Minky Whale. Meanwhile, top bottom tower does get taken down. Kadrid works that one down. Blue Buff looks like it will be secured by the Russian force, but that's opening up this mid. Look at this. Dark is in trouble. Dark is in trouble. Gets pounced on, gets locked up. Zenith Fight goes in towards him. He's in trouble. Choo Choo's will finish this one off. He gets himself the kill. Will they try and chase on towards Legacy? It would be suicide. The scariest thing about falling behind Legacy's team comp is the amount of initiation power that is sitting with the Australians. They have got engaged on four of their five champions. The ability to set up plays. And because, of course, Carbon can engage stealth, it makes the Oriana Rengo Wombo combo even more powerful. Russian force needs to have much more wards on the map if they want to avoid being jumped on further because they're falling very far behind. Yeah, there's a giant gap building in that mid lane. 93 to 63 CS. Two kills to the good as well for Chu Chu's. Giant, giant golfing class, it seems, between these two mid lanes. The problem is, I don't really see any way back right now for them. It's a dire, dire start for Russian forces. Legacy, again, going aggressive. Egym thought about it there, but Dumeka shows himself around the side in a three-man defensive from Russian forces, forces him back. So for the Russian force, they need to rely on Darker's range and bombs to contain Legacy, keep them on the back foot. They can also look to counter-engage. Legacy, Look, we know they're going to tower dive. We know they're going to invade your jungle. So if Russian Force can anticipate that, get some vision down, and then punish Legacy when they go in by surprising them, by landing a bubble, by landing a tidal wave, that can allow Russian Force to get themselves into the game. But they need to punish Legacy and uh, outplay them once Legacy engages. If they don't do that, obviously Legacy is just going to continue getting stronger, continue getting advantages in Cardred. I think he was actually looking fancied for that. a fight with yeah. Darren. I think he did. I've, he fancied that. He got himself the Sheen phase now, so he's quite possible he could have gone in there. But look at the vision that's already starting to build up. The Legacy are pointing down. The Wart's already going aggressive. That top lane starting to scout out ahead of the river. The mid lane taking all of the punishment again. Despite the fact you've got a Ziggs, he can't wave clear without items. And right now he is hurting, hurting badly. He fancied it, Kadred, and now he's going to get it. Dayrune gets some poke on towards him. Archie comes to save the day, but they've got to be careful. Egypt focusing on Demeka. Meanwhile, in the river, Choo Choo's is chasing up towards the top lane pairing as well. He's going to be able to get around the side there. Shockwave is available. He should just come around. Gets himself. Oh, if he'd only just gone around the side. Kadrin does Aqua Prison in towards him. There's the Shockwave. Pulls it on towards him. Dave Ruby goes down. They could get themselves a second. Archie's in all sorts of trouble. Flashes away. Isn't oh. it enough? No. He just about escapes. But that was, again, another trade in favor of Legacy. Very, very well played by Kadrin and Choo Choo's. Choo Choo's getting the two-man Shockwave, preventing Dave Ruby from escaping. And just not having a summon a spell available, that flash means Cogmore gets shut down. So Legacy extend their gold lead. They should grab themselves this mid tower. And if Demeka sticks around, Chuchi's maybe looking to squash another spider. He's hanging out around the Wraith camp, but Russian forces got some support moving down the lane. Not Russian forces will 
force them away for now, but that's another turret down. All three outers now burned out, and Legacy starting to assert their dominance. Dumeka in trouble, he's going to get caught out. Actually, Cocoon goes down, tries to turn it back around. Meanwhile, Carbon jumps on Archie. Archie in all sorts of trouble, so much damage coming out from the jungle. Pounces back in, pounces back around, gets on Dumeka. He will get picked up by the Mega Inferno Bomb. It's a one-for-one -one trade. Ejim in trouble as well. He's taking some punishment from Dayroom, but look at Choo Choo's just waiting around the side. Dayroom is going to continue to chase on this one, but Kadrin is now there. He's going to come around, just burn out the hit points. Dayroom just gets slow straight down there, Chu chooses the one that picks that kill up. Now Minky Whale's in trouble. He's actually going to look to engage on this one. That was definitely a mistake. But while this is all happening, Chu Chu's is going to sneak around the side. Archie, He's you better fight. start running. He's going to have to use the wild growth coming out from 80 remains. Chu Chu's will force them back, but it was the Russian force that came out ahead in that fight. Only just. Unless my math is terrible, that was a three for two in favor of Russian Force Choo Choo's. The fight went on so long that he's got his Shockwave available. But my word, Legacy, even on 10% HP, still deciding to throw themselves back in there. Ejim dove in with the Zenith Blade. Minky Whale dove in with the Twisted Advance. And this is what we were talking about with the Russian Force. If they can anticipate and punish the aggressive plays, that's how they can pull themselves back into it. Dayruin was doing fairly well but he simply lost that front line of Elise in terms of uh, tankiness. And because Dayrun was so far forward, AT remains slow on the trigger, did not use wild growth, did not allow Cogmore to survive. And this is just over-aggression from Legacy that cost him another kill. Well, Legacy at the moment are looking very strong in this game. Oh, Minky Well, caught out of position. Three members of Russian force all collapsing on towards him. That ultimate is not going to do a great deal. He'll go down. The question is, can they use anything from this? Can they try and counter it? Ejim was going to try and help him out there, but it's simply a lost cause. They're going to try and steal the blue buff. You can see Dead Carbon is down there on that blue buff. 18 remains just off of the side. It's going to try and interrupt this one, but it's going to be very hard to give him away. He's got the damage, maybe. He can turn this one around, tries to force him off the blue. It is, but now he's got to be careful. Coming around the Here side is the Ejim and Choo Choo's. Claps it in towards him. That blue buff absolutely will go Legacy's way. Yeah, so going to secure the buff. It did cost the ultimate, of course, and 18 remains bullying Carbon away. But for the time being, Legacy have just... Legacy have just overcommitted in some places, but they are doing a pretty good job of dictating the tempo of the game. We need to see how Russian Force plays this siege. Solar Flare's available. Look for the engage. Shockwave lands onto towards Demeka and Darker. That will put the pressure down. Kadra tries to get his big bombs on towards him. While this is all happening, there is a minion wave hitting on towards that top lane and Legacy. They're still pushing. Honestly, so for me, while Lexi had a great start, this aggressive playstyle is actually maybe playing into Russian Force's hands. They're not losing control and actually starting to gain a few things from it. Russian Force have got a lot of tools to counter-attack and to disengage Legacy when they jump in there. Lulu's great at that. Elise can repel on the retreat. Ziggs bouncing bombs while running away as well as a tidal wave. But for Russian Force, they need to do all of that while maintaining vision control. Look at the warding at 16 minutes. If you contrast that to game one, there's a significant number of wards more in this matchup. But look, unfortunately for Russian Force, they've given up four kills to Choo Choo's. Athenes need to see large guard and sorcerer shoes. The moment two or three members of Russian force get hit by a shockwave, all the disengage in the world is not going to help you if you've lost 50-60% of your HP on multiple members. Oh, and there he is straight away onto Darker. Look at that damage. That was just a simple attack ball and dissonance, and that shredded half of his hit points off. Minky Well sneaking around the side. They want to get the pressure on towards him. Defensive ball comes in now. He's caught on towards Dayroon. The AD carries in trouble. The wave's going to be enough to save him. Shockwave was available. Now he gets pulled in. Dayroon is in trouble. He will go down. Archie will follow. Mega Inferno gets fired off, but Darker simply running attack defensive. Calumet bounces on towards him. He goes down. It's a double for Choo Choo's. And that is a three for zero for Legacy. It was only a matter of time before that came out. They were playing the aggressive game and finally it worked out. Non-stop in Russian forces face. Legacy, I've still got about 15 seconds before Ziggs is up and available. Going to grab themselves an inner turret and very good engage from Minky Well, despite the fact he's in core out of position multiple times in the laning phase. He manages to deliver the ball for a good uh, shockwave onto both Archie and Dayruin. You see the command protect on him, and it's just, it, it's just such a scary engage composition from Legacy. They keep jumping into Russian forces, and while you think Darker may have gotten away, here comes Carbon from behind, 
pouncing on him and just melting him under that turret. Tower diving through, as we said. They're not afraid to do nope. that one. So, Dragon potential as Russian force moved in for that one. But it wasn't available to them. They do get ward coverage, so they managed to get a little bit of vision out there in towards the mid lane. But honestly, it's their own jungle they need to start looking at. It's their own jungle they need to start looking at a while ago. <laughs> and Russian force actually had pretty good vision on the blue side of the jungle. Some of those wards have timed out. The only problem is, I just don't think they've got the cohesion that Tomeka has been jumped on. Tomeka jumped on and stunned out. Look at the damage bursting straight down and towards him. Has Garvin going to finish this one off? It seems he will, but now he's in trouble. Dark is going to focus on towards him. Oh, finally he gets the kill on towards him. He stealths away in the ultimate run and he is scot free. Carbon manages to get out with his life. So he's oh, he's gone back in. I don't believe what he's doing. He's going to get out towards 80 Marines. Wild growth is just about enough to keep 80 Remains alive. And Carbon still lives. The bounty bomb finally found him. It was only a matter of time. But while that was all happening, oh. Jukes, Jukes out the way of the Decathlon surprise. And wow. Wow, wow, wow. This game is certainly 100 mile an hour. Legacy just do not want to stop. They continue jumping onto Russian force over and over and over, but it is what their composition wants to do. So this is the 1v1, despite the fact that Dayruin eats everything Choo Choo's puts down. That is a lot of damage from Dayruin. He had the Blade of the Ruin King, he had the Zeal completed, and he was able to melt it. Uh oh! oh. It's like a repeat. I'm it sure is. we've seen that camera angle before. Demeka goes down once again at the red buff. This time around, it will be Kadra that will take that red buff away. 13-7 now for Legacy. They are miles ahead in goal. 4-0 in turrets. Russian force at the moment simply helpless in their defense. Russian force need to do everything they can to keep Day Ruin alive which is going to be ridiculously difficult because of oh, how many going. people can jump on him. Here comes Carbon. His ultimate's going to be up in a couple of seconds. We'll see if they're going to chase him down. Yeah, AT Remains going to pop that speed and leg it away. But that's, of course, a tower defended. Bottom one will not go down. They thought they maybe had to just get a little bit of gold back from that one. Choo Choo gets himself blue buff for free as Carbon starts out the Dragon. The rest of Legacy closing in around them. They have full coverage, no wards from Russian force. And no idea that it's happening. The Russian force do not want to be looking for fights. Russian force want to be looking for skirmishes. They want 2v2s where... Oh, oh Demeka again. Solar Flare and Demeka once again locked out. It's going to be Kadret that picks up that kill. They're going to pick themselves up the blue along the way. And 80 remains, if he's not careful about getting down that lane, would also be collected as collateral damage. So Demeka needs to understand it's not his jungle anymore. And he needed to understand that a few minutes ago. He's given up three kills in the space of four minutes in his own jungle. And Legacy have just turned into exterminators. They continually find the spider and continually punish him. Now they don't even have oh, that good shock Big three-man shockwave pulls them in, and just like that, two goes down. It's a Yordle killing spree right now, and it's Day Ruin that's going to try and run away. The Ignite is running. He should just about survive on this one. While that's all happening, Carbon wasn't even with them. There was no jungler. They didn't care. They just went straight, balls to the wall on that one. They will get themselves and turn it down. There's going to be Demeka once again locked up. Day Ruin's the focus. He was going to get pounced on. Quill go down. Carbon on towards him. Archie the final target. That's the ace for Legacy as they just stop their way through the Russian force. They've got minions pulling up behind them, and the way Legacy plays, I wouldn't be surprised to see them going for a Nexus turret or two. They're going to grab an inhibitor at 22 minutes. And actually, we hear the fallback ping. Dare I say for the first time today in the wildcard tournament, but very, very uh, aggressive play from Legacy. In a 4v5, they win, and when Carbon comes to join the fight, they secure the inhibitor as well. 8-0-7 for Choo Choo's very strong mid lane performance. Darker coming into this one. Remember, he did play support. He's coming, expecting to play. He said, I'm going to play something new, something innovative. Pulled out Ziggs. Ziggs does not work. No, this was the end of that fight after Legacy had already initiated 4v5. And it's basically just a cleanup crew. The ability to engage, the ability to dive is very, very powerful and they're just making it work for them. Legacy have got a 40, uh, 12,000 gold lead. Super minions in the mid lane. Let's see if they actually go for Baron. Not even sure they need it, but you know what? When you got that big of a lead, why not? Well, they've swept the ward. They've started it off. There is three members of Russian force in the top lane, but the rest of them are a long way away. Remember, there's Mega Inferno Bomb. That can be tossed in from range. 
may well get try a sneaky steal on that one. Carbon tanking out a lot of damage in this one. Ejim will come in to try and tank it. Baron should zip away straight away, but uh, it will go down. That's a simple, simple pickup. And now Archie caught out. So the flare goes down, locks him up. Vicky Well going to try and find Day Ruin. He's the target he wants to twist it and bounce on towards it. Archie will get picked off at the side. And Day Ruin has been found out. Wild growth not going to be enough to save him as Carbon manages to get his claws in towards him. Darker, no mana on him. The Cathian surprise is it enough to take him down? Demeka tries to lock on towards him. Does not matter. It's a triple picked up for Cadred and Legacy again. Get themselves the ace and the game this time around. They're going to be 2 0 in the international wildcard. It is a fantastic start from the team from the Oceania region. They are just dominating the rest of the teams. Nothing could stop them this game, and Russian force did not look like a force to be feared. They were caught out of position, they were punished, and Legacy got in their faces over and over again. Well-deserved victory. And very little to say, really. I mean, from despite the fact that level one went to Russian forces' favor, it was all downhill from there. When a game finishes inside 25 minutes, it means only one thing. It was a very one-sided victory. 9-0-11, Choo Choo's dominated from the start in a straight-up 1v1 over Darka and made them count from then on in. And let's talk about also Minky Whale. While he was focused heavily, 4v1, 3v1, he still went 2-4-14. Yep. Just carried on about his business, knew what his job was. He was the man to jump on day ruin, and he ruined his day. Yeah, he really did. And despite the fact that he was focused, he kept up in CS. He still kept himself relevant with AT Remains. It just felt like... It actually just felt like AT Remains, uh, Russian force, were outclassed individually. Every single one of their opposite numbers performed better. Darker struggled in the mid lane. AT Remains struggled in the top lane. Demeka got punished in his jungle once he lost control. It felt like... It felt like he underestimated his opponents because they were in his jungle the whole time. And he got caught out three times in the space of three or four minutes, which should not happen at this level. If you know you're that far behind, if you know your opponent's going to be aggressive, don't go alone. You know, take someone with you. Walk with a, a teammate because you can't risk being alone. And this, all after getting that three buff start as yep. well. It was a fantastic start for them. It was not a very good end for them, that's for sure. So that means it's 2-0 for Legacy. Dark Passage and Russian Force now have to play each other. Suddenly this game is very big because whoever go 0-2, you're rooted at the bottom of the table yep. in a very, very tricky position. It is a round robin, so they will play each other twice. That means, of course, we will see them on the stage once again, Russian forces and, of course, Legacy. Legacy. But overall, Legacy have just looked fantastic, and their aggressive style is catching a lot of these teams off guard. The next two games that we see from Legacy are also going to be on the red side. So we need to see how their pick and ban strategy works out on that side, because in both of the games thus far, they've banned out Tristana, they then ban Nidalee and Lee Sin. Okay, not too bad, you don't want to deal with Nidalee top lane. But then they ban Zillion and Alistair, champions that they had just won with. And you're like, what, what, what's Why the thinking? Yeah, what's yeah. the thinking? So it's a very interesting pick ban phase, but you know what, it works for them. Mm. They smashed, they're 2-0, and and they're looking strong to set themselves up for a, a, a potential final position. Because of course, top two go to final, whoever wins the best of five final tomorrow actually goes to Worlds 2014. And starting off 2-0, honestly, is a long, it's a long, long way to bring yourself in that final already. Yes. That is 